You're watching Build Series Sydney. I'm your host, Hayden Quinn, and today we are going to be chatting with one of Australia's rising stars out of Hollywood, Geraldine Viswanathan. I'm sure you've seen some of her stuff, but first, let's check out her latest project, Miracle Workers. God, I know it's been a rough few thousand years, but you've still got a lot of fans down there. Do you know how long it's been since someone sacrificed a ramp to me? I thought that grossed you out. Well, you know, it did, but at the same time, there was something nice about it. So what's your job, Craig? I don't suppress. It seems like there's a lot of problems down on Earth. The polar ice caps are melting at a historic rate. Scientists are in Gucci mama. I am transferring you to the Department of Answered Prayers. I'm Eliza. I'm Craig. Welcome to Answered Prayers. You have arrived just in time. Two billion prayers received. We have to answer all those prayers? I generally try and shoot for three, four a day. Although, now that I've got you, a teammate, there's no telling what we can do. I'm thinking five, six, maybe as many as six. Anyway, big day ahead of us. Here's to the team. Cheers. <laughs> oh. Please, God, we need your help. Earth is in big trouble. It is a mess. We need a miracle. You've got to do something. You know what? You're right. Let me ask you. The game begins. Let's do this. Sorry, did you just put those glasses on just so you could take them off? Who wants to help me save this planet? So I've decided to blow up Earth. Let's keep the round of applause going for Geraldine. Round of applause again. Thank you. That looks like so much fun. When you watch that back, what, what do you feel? What comes up? Oh my, just such warm feelings. Yeah. It's just, I just love that show so much. And, and just thinking back to filming it, it was so much fun. We were, yeah, just, we shot in Atlanta for like three months and just the whole cast got so close and I just love that show. It, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. I've watched a little bit of it, mm -hmm. just enough to really get a feel for it. And mm. it, 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 it's emotive. It's funny. Yeah. What did you think when you first read the script? Um, I fell in love with it, like, one page in and was just like, oh, well, this is out of my league, but I guess I'll give it a go. Um, I just really love Simon Rich so much. I love his voice and, like, he just balances the the funny, absurdism and then just, like, the human condition and just, like, his kind of... Perspective on the world, I think, is so interesting. I just love his brain. So, um, yeah, with that script, I was just deeply in love. Had you read the book before you read the script? Um, I think I read the book after I read the script. Right, actually. as a bit of research, sort of yeah. get in the mode. But it's quite different from the book. Um, yeah, a few things have changed. She kind of advised us maybe not to read the book. Ah, right. Um, but I was like, I think I'm just going to give it a squeeze. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's pretty different. It is. It's really different, and I, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it yet on stand, but it's streaming now. It's it's fun, and I think it it makes you realise that sometimes our perception of what world is the world is really like can be a little bit disconnected from reality. Like we live in mm. a chaotic world down on mm. Earth. For those that believe in heaven, is mm. heaven white pearly gates or is right. it a crazy corporation? Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like strangely comforting that uh, on all levels it's just chaos. Um, and that we kind of, you just <laughs> have to kind of uh, work together and just uh, try and get through it. And just there's like a weird comfort in knowing that it's all random and that nothing makes sense. So, and me. your your role in the series, you went from the ministry, was it the Ministry of Dirt or the Department of Dirt, Department yes. of Dirt yeah. where you manage the soil, mm -hmm. dry clay, yeah, rock. making little clumps, uh, yeah. just organizing the clumps, you know. <laughs> But Fascinating then you, stuff. Then you were moved into the Department of Answered Prayers mm -hmm. with Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. Where you were the go-getter and he was a bit like... Yeah. Dead. 
Yeah, well, there. he's been working there for hundreds of thousands of years, so he's just plodding along. Uh, he's not, yeah, lost all his ambition. He's like, what's the point? I'm just going to help this woman find her gloves. <laughs> um, yeah. So he was going for the small stuff, like, yeah. oh, my God, God, oh, my God, God. Can you say that? I don't know. I'm not super religious. <laughs> oh, my God, I've lost my keys. Can you help me find them? That was his thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you came on and you were like, we need to go big here. We mm-hmm. need to save the world. Yeah. It's like we're answering prayers. Let's do some miracles. Let's do some cool stuff. <laughs> uh, but it's just not possible. <laughs> no, not when you're getting two million coming. Oh, was yeah. it two billion? Yeah. Yeah. Come. There's a lot of people pr- praying. I feel like uh, that's my email inbox some days. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, you're today. like, I just can't. We just go one by one, the easy stuff. If that was your role in real life, what would be the one prayer you would answer? If you could change oh the world God. today, what would it be? I've, I get this question and I like... It's like an impossible prayer. Um, hmm. Well, right now, climate change. Uh, yeah, just, th- yeah. Yeah, there's that a bit feels of a shout from the audience. Like we got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that. That would be an easy one just yeah, in the just show because there's a whole the climate section and they can move things around and, mm. you know, change mm-hmm. the world. Right. Just get that done. I know. Everyone's probably on a coffee break or something. <laughs> no one's in the office there. Well, that's what it seems like. It does pull sort of themes of like the office where you yeah. you see it and there's people behind desks and it's sort of like got these weird 80s tech and it's futuristic but it's also backward in a way. Mm-hmm. It's it's amazing that anything actually gets done. Right, yeah. It was a very deliberate choice for all the technology to be super outdated. Um, yeah, just nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess when we look at today's world, mm-hmm. people are asking for a lot mm. but... I guess if we just be good people and we have a lot of fun, mm. do you think we can just get through life without God? Or do we need a being up there around us, whatever um, it may be? Yeah, I feel like the heart of the show is just um, sticking together with other people and just uh, trying to – just the the intention of trying to make the world a better place and trying to enjoy it. Um, yeah. That's that's kind of where I feel the like in. yeah the and heart ha- of the show is. How have you found the reaction to the show? Like, has there been any like priests come up to you and say, <laughs> "Oh my God, you can't make God look like that"? <laughs> uh, anything, you know? Oof, no, there hasn't. <laughs> I've been su- I've kind of surprised by that. I've had no no beef from anyone. Really? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure Karen had a story where he he did. I think someone emailed him and was like. You're a sinner, but um, <laughs> you're a sinner, you bad, bad <laughs> person. Bad boy. Um, but no, luckily I haven't had to deal with that. No, no beef from no beef because I, I imagine like you obviously spent a lot of your time in the U.S. and America has such a multifaceted community, but mm. very strongly Christian, and right. some very very devout people in that world. Yeah. I'm sure that could be quite confronting to some of those people that think. God is up there with beautiful slick back hair and well, robes. And God is Steve Buscemi. Drinking beers, like watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't be mad at Steve. He He's the best. And I feel like his version of God is so funny. And you do love him and he is endearing and you do – he's just like us. He's yeah. just uh, got his own insecurities and he's trying to figure it out and is also overwhelmed by the responsibility <laughs> and the workload that he has. Um so, yeah. But, like, the cast is incredible. Daniel yeah. Radcliffe, Steve. Yeah. Um, how is it working with those guys? Um, it's pretty trippy, uh, but it's, it's amazing. They're yeah. so amazing. I've been so lucky. Everyone I've worked with has genuinely been amazing. Um, but I was definitely very uh, intimidated at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I definitely had moments where I was kind of outside my body being like, okay, I guess I'm talking to <laughs> Steve right now. Uh, this is this is normal for me. Um, but they're just the most grounded, yeah. amazing people. Yeah. And I guess, what, you're 24 years old. Yes. And Aussie from Newcastle. Yes. And you, you've, like we said off the top, you've landed some incredible roles throughout mm. Hollywood and now TV series. Mm. How do you, like... Pinch yourself, you know, Leslie Mann, John Cena, all these people. It's amazing. It's a constant, I'm just kind of constantly pinching myself. I'm just being like, well, <laughs> hopefully this uh, lasts for a little bit. Just enjoy it while it does. Uh, oh, it's 100% going to last. It's, it's, uh, no, it's a total, it's a total trip. I feel so lucky. It's 
crazy. Well, I feel like I was wrong off the start saying a rising star. I feel like you've made it. Like, how do you Stop feel? Stop that right now. <laughs> but I honestly, um, it's you've done some amazing things and it must feel so special to be just nailing these roles. Mm. It does. It feels really special. And what's like really nice about it for me too is that I love every single project I've done. Uh -huh. I just feel so fulfilled. Like I, um, yeah, I always kind of anticipated that there might be some, you know, you'd have to compromise or you'd, it's a stepping, but mm. I just, from the get go, like my first thing was blockers and I love that movie so much. And There's um, a few people giggling, I think. Let's, yeah, cause <laughs> there we go. Someone's giggling. Cause Blockers <laughs> was so much fun. Yeah, it was so fun. It was so fun to make. And I just like really stand by that movie. And um, so I just feel so fortunate for that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember watching Blockers and I was like, this is a lot of, you know, it's just fun. Yeah, it's, it's, fun. it's not, you don't need to go too deep into it. But yeah. did you go to your year 12 formal? I did. Is, is there any synergies between your life and what actually happened in that movie? Um, <laughs> There's more giggling. <laughs> um, hmm, a I guess a little. Just that energy of like, this is the last hurrah. We got to go all out. But I was not. I was such a little dork. I was not. Uh, My character in the movie is, is much... Wilder and cooler than I was me. just I was thinking about the whole sex pack thing. I think when I was going to my formal, I thought in my head, yeah, it's this is sex pack. Oh, night. you did? So I thought so, but there was yeah. no chance. It was never happening. <laughs> so it didn't. But I was, I was okay. a long way off, you know. Right. Yeah, which is really sad. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, my character didn't didn't go through with it either. No, it's smart. It's um, yeah, you know, whenever you put those expectations on, I feel like it just doesn't doesn't happen. But uh, I think a, a good thing. Obviously, when you look at blockers, it really does connect with so many young people on so many different levels, whether mm. you're a guy or a girl, because we've all been through those scenarios where our parents are like overbearing and over the top, but we really want to be free and do our own things and everyone has their end of year prom or formal or whatever it may be. Mm. It must be fun to live that out, you know, once you've done it in real life and then relive it in a movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely felt like... Because she is uh, wilder and more fun than me. So it was cool to do that. <laughs> I did all the, like, boring stuff in my life. Um, but, yeah, and, I mean, American prom, too. I'd always seen that in movies and thought that was fun. So to, to do a fake prom was really cool. Is that the cool thing about being an actor, being able to relive things that you wouldn't necessarily do? Yeah, definitely. It was always my dream. Well, like, watch, as watching American movies... The kids in high school always have lockers and stuff. And I was yeah. always like, oh, it'd be so cool to have a locker. So, yeah, in one of my movies, I got to have a locker. <laughs> I was like, okay. Did I you not have a locker like. at school? I had a locker I didn't. at school. You did? Yeah. Oh. With a combination lock on it. and So yeah. cool. It smelt real bad. There was like bananas rotting in the back of it. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. That was just in my backpack. I just uh, had yeah, fruit just rotting in my bottom. backpack. <laughs> just carrying it with me at all times. <laughs> Just so with a little mouse running around behind you, picking up all the crumbs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like picturing this. Yeah, my little friend. Yeah, a little friend. But you, uh, speaking of little friends, you are, <laughs> you're yes. a, you are an animal lover. Uh, yep. Okay. Let's let's do it. Let's yeah. talk. We got bunnies. We got dogs. Horses. Amazing. That's it right now. We did have a cat. What about guinea pigs? Used to have guinea pigs. Had twenty guinea pigs at one point. Growing up, you would have grown up in. Pretty normal Australian family. Yeah. Uh, and family. now it's like New York, Hollywood, Atlanta, traveling around. Mm. How does it differ? Um, yeah, no, it's, I had such a like wholesome upbringing. My parents are the best. And yeah, it was just horses and, and dogs. And uh, yeah, so now to be in the city, like in been living in New York the past year, it's uh, quite an adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, but... Still plenty of animals over there. Yeah, just it's rats and stuff. <laughs> Much less cute than bunnies. Every time you go there, and I've never lived there for an extended period of time, mm. but every time you go there, it's different. It's vibrant. It's energetic. You, you stay out till like three in the morning. Normally I'm in bed at like seven. I know. It's, it's amazing how it works. It's really fun. No, it's impossible to go to bed early in New York. Even if you're like, I'm going to do it, it just doesn't happen. Um, and yeah, it's really exciting. It's, I like it a lot. And what's your, what's your favourite part about New York and the city? Um, 
I like, well, it's really easy to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I love walking around. Feels like a little village sometimes. You're just like bopping around. And just really good plays and like arts and culture stuff. Like there's just always something going on, which I find so fun. One thing I love about New York is the stand-up scene. Yeah. You can literally walk into any bar, barbershop, pop-up, whatever it may be, and there's stand-up. Yeah. Do you visit any of that? Do you perform at any of those places? Um, no. I did one stand-up gig in New York, which was really crazy and fun. Um, but I go to a lot of, of stand-up. A lot of my friends are stand-ups. And, um, yeah, and I just think they're funny. So I <laughs> go watch them and fangirl over my friends. It seems like comedy itself is something that you have to sort of work at. Oh, yeah. Or is it, were you naturally a funny kid? Um, I, when I was like a little kid, I was very serious. I hated mm. it when people laughed at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, what's funny? <laughs> um, <laughs> very serious. And then um, I remember I did a, like a little bit in a school play I was like this little comedic bit and I remember getting a laugh there and was like, oh, <laughs> that time it felt good. <laughs> um, <so laughs> got really <clears throat> into it then. And then, yeah, I was doing stand-up in Sydney for a year, um, like the year before I went and did Blockers and loved it. Mm. It's, t it's terrifying and it often feels very bad, but um, it's when it feels really good, it's like really good. Yeah, because I, I, I love listening to stand-up and I was chasing mm. some of your stuff because I knew you'd done it before in Sydney. Mm -hmm. One of my favourites that I did get a hold of on, oh, no. on podcast was How to Pick Up an Exotic Looking Woman, which was yes, a monologue. Yes, when you're a white was, guy. Yep. Um, yeah, when you're a white guy, How mm. to Pick Up an Exotic Looking Woman. Yep. It was amazing. You guys <laughs> need to listen to it and people watching, you've got to find it on iTunes because... It's fun. Oh, good. Thank it, you. And I was like, some of it, this sounds really bad. I was like, oh, I was probably that guy. <laughs> I've probably been that, like yeah. Todd or Tad or, you know. That's <laughs> yeah, oh, be damn. named Todd. That's, uh, that's part rule of number it. four, I think. Yeah. yeah, part of the categories. Yeah. And how, how do you do that? How do you like put yourself in front of an audience, in front of a camera with all these celebrities around you? What, what, is there a switch that you flick or is it, do you learn it? How's it come about? Um, I don't know. I often kind of just sort of uh, black out a little bit and right. just kind of, uh, yeah. And then afterwards I'll be like, oh, okay. Like that's over. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. It just, you kind of need to, if you think about it too much, you feel crazy. Mm -hmm. So I need to just switch off. Yeah. You just switch off, slip into the role and yeah. go with it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you ever watch back or listen back or whatever it is and be like, I did that? Like Yeah, a little bit. It's That's funny, me? actually, that, yeah, listening to that podcast, being like, oh, yeah, I remember I, I did that. Um, no, it is, it is trippy, yeah. And with that sort of getting in the role and, and I guess the practice side of things, who has been your biggest inspiration when it comes to either movies or comedy or, or just performing in general? Mm, I don't know. There's so many people that inspire me. Um, in terms of comedy and stuff, um, I really like Kristen Wiig and who else? Um, Maya Rudolph. Like all those SNL yeah. girls. Um, yeah. And I read a lot of their books mm -hmm. and like uh, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey and yeah, I think that's the crew. You also have your own little crew here in Australia. I do. Freudian Nip. That's right. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. I've watched some of your stuff there as well. It's hilarious. Oh, thanks. And you perform and you write for them as well. Yeah. We um yeah, we work together a lot. We haven't been like since I've been over there and they've been working on SBS, killing it. But yeah, right before right when I got blockers actually, we were doing a, a sketch show together, writing and like producing and performing this <laughs> show together. It was so fun. <laughs> It's well. I think you touched on in in that series, and again, guys, you need to watch all of her stuff because it's it's very witty, it's very funny, very intelligent. There was one where you basically just ripped off Instagram influencers. Oh yes, selling motor oil. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's sponsored, Spons sponsored content. Sponsored motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please buy the oil. Please, please buy the oil. Which <laughs> I guess it's nice to be able to, I guess, do your very commercial and this. Is not meant to say bad, but like right. the Hollywood stuff, but yeah. then also slip into these smaller roles like Freudian Nip, where you can really touch on yeah. topics that you want to express right. yourself in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's really fun to 
to like write and be brainstorm with them and have the the ideas just for the weird stuff that we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of weird, when you've been on set, like in in all your time acting, mm. what's one like what's the best moment and what's probably one of the worst moments or the craziest moments you've had? On set? Yeah. Craziest moments. Or weirdest or anything that just jumps out. You're like, oh my God, did that really happen? Um, mm, I guess uh, when we were shooting Blockers, maybe? When John Cena was doing the, the butt chugging scene? Yes. I, yep. was on, I was on set for that. I wasn't even working. I actually stayed on set so I could, <laughs> so I could observe. Watch John Cena with a Yeah. Pipe. Uh, I just wanted to be a part of it. And um, <laughs> that was... Yeah, that was uh, that felt pretty crazy. <laughs> it's like uh, this is happening in front of my eyes, I guess. Um, how does a scene like that happen? Like, how do, if if you guys haven't seen it, it's a moment where John Cena gets a beer bong yes. up his butt. I didn't know that was a thing. Neither. No, I've never like the keg stand. Yeah, that's very American. Right. Beer pong, cool. Yep. This up is the, the bum. next level. Total next level. I mean, yeah, just skip the middleman. That's the idea. Yeah, fully. <laughs> <laughs> just go right in. Yeah, it doesn't look comfortable. It doesn't look comfortable, but mm -hmm. like there must be some scenes that you've done where things are like, oh, that's, it looks so real in the movie, but like, how does it happen behind the scenes? Like, w what happens there? Especially no. when it squirts <laughs> back, it's like... <laughs> oh, yeah, how did they do that? I, d I think, there, yeah, there must have been some sort of contraption there. I don't think that was actually, uh, <laughs> like, it, what was going on. Um... No, it's all, it's all, yeah. Well, he was, he was a champ. He really, John Cena, uh, yeah, he really went for it. He was into it. Yeah. He seems like the guy that would sort of take on a role. He's yeah. like, okay, yep. No, he's I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I can smash it. Yeah. Yeah, fully. He was like, okay, uh, let, let's do it. K Cannon. Yeah. He's and the best. Speaking of which, K Cannon, you've, you've worked with, amazing female directors, mm. writers, producers across the board. Um, and I guess it's something that's quite normal for you, whereas a lot yeah. of actors, actresses in the past, it's not so much been that way. Right. What, what's your feeling around that? I you know. It's so lucky. Like, I've, yeah, working with first-time female filmmakers, writer-directors, it's just such a treat every time. And I, yeah, definitely feel so grateful for it because it hasn't been a conscious effort. It's mm. just kind of been what's come up. Um, and it's it's just, it feels so right, especially mo a movie like Blockers or I did a movie called Hala and just uh, movies, it just, you feel so comfortable on set and you just, I do think it has a beautiful impact mm. on the movie itself, mm. that kind of security and um, authenticity, especially when it's dealing with female characters. Yeah. And you, you touched on Hala, which mm -hmm. was premiered at Sundance Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Now, I read somewhere, did was there a writer in there that 65% plus of the yes. crew and cast had to be female? Yes. Or were cho it was chosen that that was the yep. way it was going to happen? Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that, you know, we talk about blockers and miracle workers and it's really funny, goofy, easy to watch, relaxed comedy mm. Hala is like this is your dramatic side mm -hmm. was it fun to sort of switch gears a little bit yeah it was it was so fun I mean I had just come off the back of shooting this Netflix movie called The Package which is kind of the silliest um <laughs> thing I've done and was so fun and like completely outrageous and then I went straight on to Hala and I was like okay switching <laughs> gears uh but it was such a good exercise it felt um yeah it was Really nice to do something dramatic and juicy like mm. that. Mm. Um, yeah. And did you did you connect with the role at all? Like, I guess playing uh, someone that is it's such a powerful role to play. Um, mm. Again, switching gears. How do you connect with something that's so deep and so important in today's society? Mm -hmm. um, the the director Minhal and I just worked really closely because it's very much based on her mm -hmm. and um yeah we just dug real deep into both of us and um just tried to have fun with it yeah i read somewhere that when minhal met you the mm -hmm. character sort of morphed and changed a little bit Pro yeah which is 
cool because I guess that means she's really connecting with you mm. as an actor and mm-hmm. like wanting to play to your strengths and your story and who you are, but also shaping the film in a certain way that she sees. Right. Yeah. I think that's that does happen. I think it's always kind of like the writer starts the drawing and then the actor kind of has to finish it a Polish little bit. It off, yeah. Um so it's such a collaboration. So yeah, I I feel like it definitely would have had to transform a little bit yeah one thing i really love about the way you act and and you as a character in in all your different roles is the way that you know you're really funny and witty and like those lines you deliver them they're like bang but minhal or yeah like boom like <laughs> ah, so good she she said that um because you're so expressive there is so much going on underneath the surface when you're looking at her you don't it's communicated in a different way you can communicate things with your face with your expression you don't necessarily need to use words and i thought that was really cool that's nice yeah thanks minhal yeah um yeah i guess so is that see look there it is there's a little face is that again like talking about skills is that just something you develop or do you have to consciously think about these deliveries when you're not actually speaking um no i i just um i just try to think what the character is thinking and then hope that that's comes across um yeah hopefully that's that works it works it works really well (laughs) it works perfectly (laughs) well guys i i know one of the things that we do we open up to our live audience here for a few questions Mm -hmm. So, I've got a couple of questions here on my iPad, um, if I can find them, from Lucy. Hello, Lucy. You like like Lucy? We like you already, Lucy, wherever you're hiding, up the back there. (laughs) (laughs) Where were you when you got the news you landed the role on Miracle Workers? Um, I was in Vancouver. I was shooting the the package. I was… On set. Um, yeah, and I got the call, had a little cry and uh, went back to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would have been a special moment though. It was. that Because it's really my dream project. And I, I was fully like, I'm not going to get this, but I'll just go along with it. Um, so that was, yeah, really special. Yeah. Was there any celebration or was it like straight back to work? I don't know. I think it was just straight back to work. <sighs> I mean, I mean, you're a working girl. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got to be focused. Yeah. Um, no time. Okay. Question from Nav: How does your experience in Australian film and television differ from the US? Mm. Well, I've I've had a bit less experience in the Australian film and TV, um, but it's not it's not that different. I think, other than. I mean, sometimes <laughs> budget. Hollywood's like, woo. Um, <laughs> but SBS, um, not so much woo. <laughs> Hollywood, yeah. a little bit more. I know. But th- I think that's probably the only like actual thing that I noticed different. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, kind of kind of the same. Better better coffee on Australian sets. Yeah, true. Yeah, that, that's sorry, very true. America, <laughs> but your coffee sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. Yeah, we all probably more expensive as well and it's not as good sounds good okay now this one comes from sarah Mm -hmm. she says tell us about the auditions slash who you're up against when you are auditioning for miracle workers Mm. and did you know when you were auditioning that it was for a part alongside daniel ratcliffe um yes i did well first i auditioned for the character of laura and Mm -hmm. um they were like nah and then I came back for Eliza and then I had a chem read with, with Daniel. I um, was very nervous <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I, it was at like 9 a.m. on a Sunday um, and I, before I went in, I spoke to Les Chantry, who is an amazing Australian acting coach and he was just like, just have fun. Um, y- if you're nervous, I've, there's a little trick. Um, if you, you feel comfortable around someone if they know a secret about you. So he was like, visualize yourself telling Daniel a secret. So I went in, um, I wore my grossest, oldest, like holiest pair of undies. And I visualized myself being like, hey, Daniel, I'm 
actually wearing my grossest undies. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it oh, really worked. No way. I went in and I was just like, <laughs> 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 you know, he didn't know, but I thought he knew. <laughs> and, um, and then we just had fun doing the scenes. So it actually, good, good trick. Thank you, Les. Yep. Keep that one for next Keep time. Keep it just <laughs> doesn't have to be the undies. That was my creative <laughs> decision. But just any secret. I'm just thinking about me and Holly Undies now and it's not, not a good <laughs> Yeah, not sorry. A good thing. <laughs> sorry to plant that image <laughs> into everyone's mind. Uh, we've got one from Leishy. Uh, Leishy. Have you ever met a celebrity who has made you starstruck? Mm. And what happened? Um Hmm. I saw on Instagram you saw the Queen once. I was <laughs> I was stalking your Instagram <laughs> stories and whatnot. What's the yeah, go there? She was a little cutie. Um, I didn't meet her though. Oh right. That would have no. I'm not You're just creeping the Queen. From, creeping from a far. I away. truly was just like zooming in. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she walked. She walked past me, and she wore this like cute little orange suit. She was. It was very. It was very sweet. Um. But no, didn't have to, didn't curtsy with her. Um, who have I? Oh, I did really embarrass myself in front of a comedian that I really like on SNL called Kyle Mooney. Um, I, he's so funny. And um, I went, I visited the SNL set. My friend's a writer there. And um, I, yeah, I went up to him at the after party and, and truly... Um, it was not cool. Fangirl moment. Yep. <laughs> it was very, very embarrassing. Woke up the next morning and was like, oh, <laughs> why did you do that? Um, yeah. Uh, we have another question from Nav. Do older actors slash veterans of the industry take a mentoring role for actors like yourself who are building their careers? Mm. Uh, and do you seek out that sort of mentorship? Um, I, I do. Yeah, I could use a mentor. Help me out. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's always like, um, you know, I just did a movie with Hugh Jackman and he's amazing. And uh, just so I think I just uh, learn just from being around them. Mm -hmm. There's no like official wisdom that they impart on me, um, even though I would like that. Um, but it's more just th their support and encouragement on the day while we're working is nice. Um, but yeah, no official mentor. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. I would like that. <laughs> yeah. Wolverine wasn't good enough or was he just busy? I think he's just busy. He's just busy. But yeah. what, what was it like working with Hugh Jackman on what, – what's the new film you're um, about to come out? It's about, yeah, it'll come out later this year, I think. It's called Bad Education. Mm -hmm. um, it's with Hugh Jackman and Alison Janney um, and Corey Finley is the director who's an amazing filmmaker. Um, yeah, he's the best. He's so cool. And it was really nice being with another Australian on set. And his wife's family is from Newcastle, so when she visited, we were like, hello. It was uh, really nice. Well, that's amazing. Like, he, you know, when you think of Australian actors, he's got to be up there with number one. I think and he's, yeah. Yeah, he's he, the one. he is the one. Mm. Um, so, special times for, Truly. for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Geraldine. Thank you. Um, big round of applause for Geraldine, just quickly. <laughs> And, guys, make sure you check out Miracle Workers. It's exclusive on Stan streaming right now. Go and check it out. It's so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks, everyone.